Hello and welcome back to Much Talk About Rugby, episode 21, where we <laughs> chat about everything rugby. Uh, today we're going to do a little bit of a review of the weekend's rugby and then we're going to talk about some stories on BBC Sport and then we are going to jump into our thoughts on the current England squad that's been picked before the final four teams um, join them. So, without further ado, let's jump into it and talk about the match that happened in the early hours of this morning for us people living in England. I know we have a lot of international viewers, so let's talk about Bledders, though. Um, so, we had a, a, a really interesting match. Of, I didn't watch it personally. I caught the highlights. Obviously, it's a bit early in the morning for me. But it was 16 all at the end. And the one question I have to ask is, why no drop goal? Yeah, I think definitely from our experience in RWC, when you're in front of the post like that in the last minute, literally in front of the posts, and you're just crashing at the ball, literally five metres out, why not just ping it back to whoever's playing Mwanga or anyone who can do yeah, drop goal? anyone. McKenzie. Literally anyone. Jordy Barrett, any of those players who can kick pretty well and just slot it over for the win. But uh, I think, yeah, obviously it was a good game. Uh, I actually, I'm quite surprised about because obviously I think Australia's had quite a revised like renewed squad. I think they could be completely rehauled it after um, the World Cup. But what did you, what did you make of the game? Yeah, obviously I didn't watch it. Um, I mean, neither of us did. But watching the highlights, um, I think the key points for me, I think New Zealand both got lucky and then kind of messed it up a little bit because. I think it was New Zealand's match for the taking, mainly because when um, Jordy Barrett scored in the corner, he, uh, Rico Iwani on the other on the other touchline when they passed it wide actually had a foot in touch, and there's a picture of it, and his foot's like clearly in touch, and yeah. Angus Gardner the side the assistant ref didn't call it stupidly, but that should have been called back. So they were lucky on that to score that try, and then. Obviously, later on in the match, Rico Iwani actually fluffed his lines and, and um, when What's he dived over... Because I swear his finger was literally touching the ball. But he's not as... in control, is it? Is that, is it, is it like, that I, th- I, be... I think, well, I think the rule is, the rule is you have to have control of the ball. And if he's, like, that's, that's his trademark, obviously, doing the whole... Diving yeah. and slamming it, it down at the same it's time. It's like the ash splash. Like, obviously, yeah. it's going to end up messing up at one point. But... So, obviously, it happened today. And that kind of cost them the win, really, didn't it? I think Australia were down at that point. And, you know, yeah, fair enough, do it. And it's come off for him every time. And he's done it a lot. But you just think, just slide like Geordie Barrett did. I think I heard, I heard one of the commentators or something say, like, why would you not just slide? Like, yeah. Yeah, it's so it, it's so yeah. obvious. Like you literally got to run into the line. Just put the Let ball down normally. It. Just put the ball down normally, mate. It's so frustrating. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's but I think does that not balance out the fact that they probably shouldn't have got a try earlier? That's the way I was thinking of it because they probably they shouldn't have. Been yeah, it kind of it kind of does. But Maybe the thing karma. is, the reason the, so they were they were given the try earlier, and then they had that opportunity, which obviously would have been a try. So they should have jumped on that opportunity and just. Like Rico just should have scored it, but he didn't. So I think, yeah, it was New Zealand's match for the taking, really, and they didn't take it. So um, I also think Australia did play quite well and did score some like decent tries. I thought Corabetti's try was really, really nice in the corner, nice hands out to the wing. Um, but I think the highlight for me was Aaron Smith's try. It was actually oh, was, mental. Yeah. Move off the line out, like inside ball. Was it George Bridge? And then Aaron Smith had run a dummy line already and had kept running up forward, expecting Bridge to make the break, which is just so clever from Aaron Smith, mate. Literally could crawl up inside him and just live there. Yeah, his run was insane on that. He's so good. Yeah. That was such good. No, it was a nice uh, scrap between him and Nick White, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it just shows, like, is Aaron Smith the best nine in the world or is it Faster Clerk? I think it's more closely contested than people think. Yeah. So... Yeah, 16 all in that game, but it shouldn't have been really. I think the All Blacks should have won. They had opportunity after opportunity and didn't take them. So, Australia, you're lucky. And I think, have we got another one coming up? Have we got another Bledisloe coming up? 
Yeah, I don't. It don't don't they? I think they're doing another one next weekend or the weekend after. I yeah, don't know how I think it's at Eden play, Park. Or, yeah, I think it's at Eden Park. So yeah, that'll be interesting to see how. I think I think the All Blacks haven't really lost there ever, or something. So or maybe they lost against the Springboks there. But I think um, it'll certainly be an interesting match and see how they change the teams around. See what other new Australian players come through the ranks. Yeah. So yeah, really. that was a really good good. Um, sorry, yeah, go on. I was just going to say, the, the New Zealand squad was quite interesting, actually, because obviously they had Rico in a... No no ALB, they had Rico in a 13. They are uh, obviously no Severis out and Jordi Barrett on the wing as well. I thought it was quite an interesting... I think, obviously, now that the World Cup... It's the beginning of the next World Cup cycle. They're seeing a lot of, like, change in the squads, which is quite yeah. interesting. I feel quite exciting, because then you see these players, four players getting a chance, Yeah. Also, no Will Jordan, which is interesting. Yeah, that is. Is he? He's in the uh, whole whole squad, though, isn't he? Or is he not? I think he is. I don't know. Really, he might have been on the. I don't think I saw him though, so he couldn't have been on the bench. But yeah, yeah it's just. Uh, wait, <sighs> Satutu got got they got they got they came on. I think I think they got their first cap. So. Yeah, know. how do you fit them all in though? How do you fit them all in? You literally can't. They've just got too many good good players. Um, but anyway, moving on, we had two other matches this time in the Northern Hemisphere, Premiership Rugby semi-finals. So to start off with, Mal, what do we have? We have the first game, which was Wasps versus Bristol, and I'm actually surprised by this. I thought Bristol would do better, but they got absolutely destroyed. 47-24 by Wasps, which, what can you say? They look, Wasps, Wasps look good. Yeah, they switched on Jack Willis. What a player, mate. What I, a player. I told you, he is insane. Mackie yeah. just doesn't rate him as much, but he is seriously good. He's seriously good. Like He's got to be, I think he has to be given a chance at England. And I think no, I 100%. Actually, I was listening to the BBC rugby podcast and Ugo mm-hmm. Monier was saying, how can you even ignore the fact that he's got double the amount of the second best people in turnovers? Like, even though Mackie was saying, like, oh, some people can be given the job of doing turnovers, that's still a ridiculous stat. You can't ignore that. Yeah, like, yeah. I th- I, what, what do you think? What do you think? Okay, here's a shout. Because he's playing so well and because he's in such good form, if he maintains this form and coming into the international stage gets given a, given a chance with England... What do you think about a Lions shirt? Because Tom Curry came into uh, the England squad like fairly recently, like within the last year or two. And then now everyone's got him pinned for Lions. Like he's pretty much an obvious choice for a, at least a squad place. So what do you think about Jack Willis? It's a hard one because I, I, don't, I don't know if he's got any caps yet. So I think, I guess it's a bit harder to, with obviously um, Tom Curry's had a whole World Cup under his belt. I think that make, and has six nations, which makes a big difference, I think, because obviously pre- playing premiership, playing international is such a big step up. You're, you're literally playing the best of the best um, in, a, in any international game. So obviously yeah. if he if he plays well then if he plays literally insane you can't deny he could be a bolter but he'll have to yeah if he can carry on his form then it's a possibility but with all the choice it's hard to say because there's back row is such a competitive position at, um at for for literally every club so when there's three of the biggest nation or like three or four four of the biggest nations all of their back rows who are pretty good uh, no, three of the biggest nations in Scotland. <laughs> <Rare. laughs> but yeah, it's hard. But um, no, overall, was very good. What What do you make of it? Yeah, I was also a bit a bit surprised by Bristol. They didn't really fire. I thought, you know, Rad Randrada Randrandra, as as he prefers to be called, I think, didn't really fire. I don't know. I thought I thought there was still some good good moments for Bristol. I think Max Malins has played outstanding in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, he's been. Um, really and uh, we we mentioned him about the Challenge Cup um semi final, and he's playing really really well. So he could be another one that possibly bolts into the Eng- into the England squad and possibly f- 
further from that if he gets a chance in an England shirt, especially because he's a 15 as well, and England don't really have that solid 15 at the moment. So he's a possibility. I don't know. I, I, I thought, honestly, I thought Wasps just played really well. And because you got Jack Willis just so good, mate. Like whenever he carried, he carried really well. Whenever he turned the ball over a shit ton of times, pardon my French. He, uh, <laughs> yeah. He scored, didn't he? I thought I just, yeah, he also scored a try. Like he drove it over from about two meters out and like he had two people on top of him or something, just stupidly powerful. <laughs> so I really do think it's, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I was, I was expecting more from Bristol, but I'm almost happy to see Wasps in the final because I think Exeter would have absolutely destroyed Bristol. And I'm not 100% sure now, looking at how well Wasps played. And if they can get around the outside of Exeter, then, you know, it's, we're in for a good game, basically. It, yeah, it would be a good competition. I think that, I think Wasps are definitely the closest side who well, it's proven now. But like, I think even coming into these games, Wasps were going to be the likely side who could stop Exeter. I think... Bristol, like, obviously, they built such a good squad over the the last season or two or two couple of seasons, but I think they're still in that building stage where they are able to, yeah, be a really competitive side. But I don't think they're quite at the top yet. But I think maybe in a season or two they could really be pushing for this final, and um, obviously they're going to have champions Champions Cup uh, rugby next season, and also they got the Challenge Cup final, so they may get some silverware anyway. Which would be interesting. A hundred percent. Yeah, no, they they do have that. So maybe that was in the back of their mind. They, I don't know. What do you reckon they'd rather? I think I think being being. Obviously, they would rather win both, but at the same time, I think they'd already had that in mind, maybe, and they were kind of like, okay, yeah, like, where by the time Wasps had got that far in front, they were kind of just like, yeah, okay, this isn't our game, but we've got that match coming up mm. that we can still win some silverware. So, yeah, but talking about Exeter just now, um, they were in the match afterwards, weren't they? What was the score in that one? That game was classic Ex- Exeter demolition, 35-6 to six against Bath, of, of course. Of Bath, yeah. No, I thought I thought that Bath should have done better. I thought that, yeah, extra machine, and they probably would have run away with it anyway. But there was a point in the first half when I think it was Johnny Hill got a yellow card and Bath scored a try, and then it was called back for crossing. Um, mm. Sam Underhill was standing on the outside of the rock and the guy just ran into him and put the ball down and everyone was like, yeah, Bath has scored. And then the referee was like, actually, no, obvious crossing. So I think if they had taken their opportunity there, then it could have been a completely different game. And Bath had like the fire plan. They didn't really stop Bath. It was, I think I, I, I heard a stat actually during the game towards the end that Exeter actually had the highest percentage of dominant tackles compared to like overall tackles in the game, the highest percentage of dominant tackles. So whether you hit them behind the game line or push them backwards mm. um, out of any team in any game this season. So that's really? how well, Ex- that's how well Exeter defended. And like, yeah, Bath obviously didn't get a try, which shows, but they should have essentially. And then also at the end of the game, Rory McConaughey, obviously <laughs> can't leave him out. He, he made a, ridiculously good break and made about 50 meters up the pitch and then managed to give the ball but then someone slipped and it was all very close and Rosa couldn't quite get in the corner he's kind of tripped over himself a little bit which was a bit of a shame I think Bath definitely deserved something from the game maybe a consolation try but at the same time Exeter are just a well-oiled machine and they can't be stopped yeah I think that is literally the perfect way to describe them well well-oiled machine Literally, they just, as soon as they get in the, what's called 22, five metres, they literally can't be stopped. And I think it's going to be seen in the Champions Cup final as well. Maybe a bit of demolition there too. Just with the, the form they're proving to have, I think, yeah, they, they're pretty unstoppable right now. Yeah, I think I don't really think anyone's really come close to them, like, all season, unless they've played a really weak side, as in, like, their players that aren't Henry Slade and Jack Noel and people. And I didn't, they didn't even have Jack Noel this weekend. So <laughs> they've still got him to come in on the wing. 
and like their pack. I don't know this guy. This guy Jack Vermeulen just looks like a bit of a beast. What's his name? Hill. Johnny Hill keeps scoring tries. What a second row. He's got like five <laughs> or six tries in those last three or four games. It's silly. It's silly. They are they are just a well oiled machine, and it and it's um they're going to be very tough to beat in both the Champions Cup final and the and the Premiership final. Yeah, one hundred. So I think they are looking like the best side in Europe right now. I'm not gonna not gonna lie, but I think moving on, you had a few BS yeah. stories that that we wanted to cover from BBC Sport. If you want to, yeah. So literally just before the podcast, I was looking to find the England squad um, that was chosen by Eddie Jones, um, which didn't include the Bath, um, Exeter, Bristol, and Wasp players. So it was kind of like giving a couple of people an opportunity to get into the England squad and see what life's like in the England camp, which is really good. But as I was looking through, trying to find the article on BBC Sport, I found two articles here next to each other in the feature and analysis section. And they are the biggest pieces of crap I've ever seen in my <laughs> life. Um, so one, the first one is Ugo Monnier's article. I mean, it's not, okay, it's maybe not the biggest piece of crap I've ever heard, but can, I don't know, okay? Let, let, let me just say what it's about. The first one's about Joe March. Here's the title. Joe Marchant, Harlequin Centre, has outside shot, in, in inverted commas, at Lions, says Ugo Monnier. And I just think, he hasn't even played well for Harlequins. So what, what, do, what does it even mean, outside shot? What does that mean? It, it means basically... <sighs> Because Manu's injured, um, that he someone's gonna have to, someone's gonna have to go in his place, and it could be Marchant. But I just think there's so many other players that you could choose, like mm. Joe Marchant. I'd have Jonathan Joseph over Joe Marchant. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I hundred percent. I think obviously you choose uh, John Joseph because obviously he's got the experience and he's also playing pretty well at the moment for Bath. Whereas Marchant isn't in isn't in his peak form. Yeah, he, he was, he's been playing all right. He's pretty solid, but nothing incredible. Um, but yeah, as well as that, along with all the competition from the other nations as well. Obviously, England got Slade, who is hundred percent should be making the line. Yeah, a hundred percent. He's he's going on tour. He is just too good to leave out. And I think, as we've said before, like the versatility he has is like unreal. Like being able to have him play literally anywhere in the back line makes him so useful because obviously just how good is that? As well as he's just been insane. Then also Ireland also have Ring Rose. Bundyaki, I guess, could kind of play in terms of um, to Alan. Yeah. Like... Well, Wales, Jonathan they, Davies. Jonathan Davies, yeah, like got got so many options okay. literally everywhere. And this and this brings me on to to, our, to my second article that's just even worse because it's about a Welsh player. <laughs> um, it's Nick Tompkins, Wales centre, aims for British and Irish Lions dream. He's not very good. I mean, he's not very good. He's all right. He. I think he's, he's he was playing well for uh, uh, Wales in the last Six Nations. Pretty oh, average, mate. Wales aren't even Wales aren't even on good form at the moment. Like I know no one's played, but like they were completely flopping in the Six Nations. They yeah. got absolutely trounced by France at home, hmm. and like Tomkins, I think they just didn't really have anyone else. You know, Jonathan Davies was out; he was injured, so. Like, who else do you put? Wales don't really have anyone else apart from Nick Tompkins. So, I think that's another just BS thing that someone from Wales has decided to to write about Nick Tompkins. Is it a Welsh um, guy who's written that? Obviously, article? obviously, uh, it's it's actually quoting Nick the whole time. Oh, so. <laughs> but at the same time, like, it's uh, it's a bit of a stupid article to write because. Surely, if you're if you're a professional rugby player, your first goal is to play for your country, and the goal after that is obviously to play for the British and Irish Lions. And if you're making like, if you ask any rugby player, would you like to play for the British and Irish Lions? 
they're going to say yes, surely. So what's the point of that article? It's yeah. silly. It's just talking to a rugby player for the sake of talking to a rugby player when, I don't know, he hasn't even played that much rugby. No one's played that much rugby recently. Also, who did yeah. he even play for at the moment? Did he play for Scarlets? Scarlets, yeah. Fair. Yeah, and they're not, about- they're not even good. No, I think Scarlets. I think Scarlets are actually right. To be fair, like, um, do you know Steph Evans? Scarlets. He's actually, he actually is pretty good. Like, that's one guy who actually wait rate quite a lot from um the Welsh squad. Um, I think he. I think I've seen, he's got a mullet at the moment, hasn't he? I saw him playing yeah, in, yeah, the pro, fat in the Pro fourteen. Yeah. Maybe he doesn't have a shot, but obviously he's can maybe have like a consideration if he keeps up form. I don't Possibly. know how well he started. To. Possibly. I don't follow the, I'll tell the, the you, Pro 14, but... I'll tell you what would be stupid if someone like George North made the Lions squad. I mean, has he done anything recently? I mean, no, but the point is, is that he made the last one. I didn't really see that, and he wasn't in good form, and he was just kind of on the tour, and I was just like, yeah, he played really well in the, in the tour before, but what's he done like since? Yeah. I think you have to remember also that you have you can't just pick like the like kind of younger informed guys because obviously if there's if there's guys who have played before played well together and you know who have played well together then you're going to be able to have like good chemistry so and obviously North as you said was in the previous squad so obviously he's going to be a member of the Lions squad there's going to be people who have who are picked based on being on the Lions squad and having the experience who are still playing yeah. decently well. And but I can't imagine that he is going to, yeah, carry on. I think with, yeah, the form of other wingers is seems unlikely. yeah, it's too strong in that position. It's too strong, which and, I think brings us on to our next point. Sorry, you were about to say. I was just gonna say, and also, Brookie Lowe has been selected for the Ireland summing squad. I don't know what has he summing squad. I don't know if it's his, if it's the training squad, but he's he's he pretty much being introduced. It, into James Lowe, not Brookie Lowe, the same yeah. Lowe, but <laughs> James Lowe is his actual name. But yeah, he's uh, yeah, I think he. So yeah, it seems like he will actually be playing for Ireland. He is making that switch to from obviously allegiance to the All Blacks to the to Ireland. So he's obviously yeah. going to be good. I know. Well, that was that's just silly. Like there, there's been a lot of talk, like because John William McBride. Um, who was famous Lions captain uh, a few years back. I think it was in the 70s or the 80s, maybe. I think it was the 80s. And he essentially said the other day, if you want to play for Ireland, you should have Irish blood coursing through your veins, I think was the exact wording that he used. Oh, my God. And uh, like, there's basically been a bit of a debate around that because I don't know what your opinion is on it, but I... I don't really mind. I think I think the five year residency rule is a good one. It shows that you've got commitment to live somewhere and, and get citizenship, which is usually the amount of time you have to stay in a in a country anyway to get a, a a formal citizenship. So I think that rule's okay. And if you still represent your country and and say that, you know, Sean Maitland's from New Zealand, Billy Vunapola's from Tonga, from Tongan heritage. They've just lived in Wales. Like, what's the difference between Billy Vinopola and James Lowe? It's just the matter of time, isn't it? And James Lowe's still been in the in Ireland for however long it takes him to get residency. So, yeah, well, I think I think. What James do you think Lowe about was, it? James Lowe was lucky because obviously he, I think he's just beaten the cutoff point for the five years because I think he's only been playing for Leinster for three years. Oh, has he just missed the cutoff then? So yeah, he's just beaten the cutoff of the fight. So he's just beaten it. So he's able to get his residency for Ireland, um, Ireland rugby, with only three years. I think from like November, it's changing to um, five years, something like that. So obviously that's lucky for him. So, but I think yeah, I think going forward, it, three years was a bit potentially a bit short. I think obviously that's the reason why they've changed it. But being able to have players, if you're, if they're living in another country. And they haven't, and they're not, and they haven't been able to make their own national team. Obviously, if they have their own aspirations to play for their own national team at that point, they would go and play for them. Like, say James Lowe hadn't hadn't still, or say he still wants to play for the All Blacks and thought he still had a chance, he's going to end up playing. He would go back to the All Blacks. But I think 
it seems obvious that he probably wouldn't make the All Black squad now, but he could make the Ireland squad and probably will. So it makes sense for him. Why would he not? Why would he turn that opportunity down when he's been playing in Leinster, knows loads of the Leinster guys, is going to be able to play with them at an international level where he's probably going to get better and prove himself a bit more? I just don't see why, for any player, why no, it makes sense. Why you would turn that down? I think maybe for maybe the Tongan Samoan players, where obviously they would obviously make their squad because they're good enough. It's a bit more of a different situation because I think obviously so many players are taken away from those Pacific Island nations where where they, like, especially in New Zealand, where there's so many of them who, if they have a squad of all the Pacific Island nation players, it would actually be a very strong squad, but then they end up playing for other countries like, yeah, New Zealand, Australia, yeah. and whatever. No, so I, that, I think it is a, a different one. I think it is interesting, but I just think going back to that um, John William McBride statement, I think it is like, okay, so basically what you're saying is like, you don't want people like CJ Stander playing for Ireland. <laughs> and you don't want, because he's like full suffer. You don't want literally half of every uh, international squad basically playing for that country. Like, I don't know. <sighs> Yeah, half the England squad, like Brad Shields is playing for England for a bit. He's basically about as key as you can get. Ben Teo, like all yeah. of these players. like, And I mean, yeah, some of them are through like uh, a partly English mother or father or an English grandmother or grandfather. And it's like, it's a bit of a weak link. But I mean, if I, I think it's all about passion and like as long as you're willing to play hard and work hard and do everything you can and sing the national anthem, I guess, and have that passion for your for that country that you've chosen. Because, I don't know, part of it is like home is where the heart is, isn't it? So it's like if you put your faith and your trust in one place and you've just got rid of the other one, then I don't really see the problem with it, personally. Yeah, I, I 100% agree with you. I think as long as you're willing to play well and you're going to help the country doing to perform better if you're the best option for that position especially uh such players like Tuolangi who what is he Samoan heritage Tuolangi um yeah I think he's either some I yeah I think he is Samoan I think yeah. his um, no, I think his, his brother brothers, played for, his brothers yeah. will play for Samoa yeah like Tuolangi if we didn't have Tuolangi like obviously he's a bit injured at the moment but we he's a massive massive part of the England squad like he's made such a big impact in the World Cup, so who wouldn't want to Alangi in their squad? So I think as long as the yeah player is, as you say, passionate to play for the country and wants to play for them, then I don't. There is no problem if they have the residency. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, I think that's that's pretty obvious. But obviously, some people get a bit insy about it. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but moving on swiftly, um, we're just gonna have a quick conversation now I guess about the uh, England rugby squad that's just been picked and people who we think might lose their place, people who we think might get a place out of the four teams that are still yet to be selected from uh, so looking I've got the team up here on my laptop just left of the screen where I can see Maliki um, so Mal, who, who do you see there that, that maybe might lose their place I guess Obviously, looking at the backs, Ali Crossdale, Fraser Dingwall. Fraser Ding Dong. Fraser Ding Dong, Nathan Earl, George Furbank, Willie Hines. Yeah, uh, I, think, Mitchell, I think. Potentially. Yeah, I think it's most of the back line, really, isn't it? I think. Yeah. Well, you think, you think about who we've got coming in. So we've got Robson, who's on top form. Mm. We've got, is it Jack Maunder, the extra scrum half, who could easily be given a, a, a place in, in the England squad because yeah. of the way that extra are playing. You've got you've got Johnny Hill could be given a spot. You've oh why, why am I talking about Johnny Hill? We're talking about backs. We got um <laughs> Slady obviously Jack Noll Devoto could be given a spot. All those extra backs to start off with along with Joe Simmons as well. Like it's a no brainer that I basically this is a very, very second slash third string England squad. Yeah. Um 
yeah, obviously, who else haven't I haven't I mentioned? Mal, he plays for. Well, Bar. I think I think well, a player who I think should have been in this squad who clearly isn't is Marcus Smith. Like, obviously. Oh yeah. You got George Ford and and uh, what's it called? Owen Farrell. Owen Farrell, yeah. You obviously got Ford and Farrell in, but surely this is the perfect opportunity to get because I think this is going to be the squad for a uh, Barbarians game or something, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So I think so. Surely, surely this is the perfect opportunity to get Marcus Smith some game time, get him a bit of preparation because you know, obviously, it's going to be obvious that Farrell is going to be the starting ten. Ten. Probably, he's the first choice ten, um, unless he sticks to the ten twelve axis of Ford and Farrell. But it should. Be, I still like. Be... I still like Ford. I still think he's a good player. I just think he's playing on a bad Leicester side at the moment. Yeah, a, a very bad Leicester side. But I think thinking back to the future, you have to give get try get these players like Smith some game time where you can. And obviously, against the Barbarians game where it doesn't matter too much. And considering Smith has been on good form this whole season, I don't see why he wouldn't be included in this. Um, Who knows? Well, look, look, this is obviously just um, basically a squad for the Barbarians game, I guess. So it says here, an updated England squad will be confirmed ahead of England's next training camp, um, which will be from the 15th to the 17th of October. So that's four days' time from, from... the recording of this episode so i think i think that is another another point to take in that he could completely bring in new players that haven't been selected f- for this barbarians match mm. so who knows maybe he might get an opportunity but then you just like ford and ford and farrell obviously they're basically dead certs for the england squad and then yeah marcus smith has played well but has he played better than joe simmons like joe simmons Bear in mind, he's also captained that extra side, mm. and they are the like we've already said, the dominant force in Europe. Yeah, it is very interesting. Um, I would like to point out in the forwards, it is good to see Alex Dombrant getting a chance oh, as well. Oh, hundred percent. Because I know you were particularly keen for him to be the replacement for what's his name, Billy V, when he was injured. Um, yeah, so it's good to see I him think... get ran out. I think can 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 you imagine like I I know, like, I know we have like Vunapola, Curry, and Underhill basically at the moment is our top back row. But I I equally think that a back row of something like Underhill at six, Jack Willis at seven, and Alex Dombrand is equally as scary. Like yeah, 100%. or maybe even playing Tom Curry at six or something. I don't I don't know whether you could do that. Whether you could have like two sevens really playing at six and seven, but. I think that would be equally like threatening, basically, as a back row, mainly a- attacking, but also like Jack Willis. Can you really leave him out? He's definitely going to make the England squad, and if he doesn't, he then that's too fast. It's a fast. He has to, and I think Ben Earl. That's the thing. Where could could can they fit in Ben Earl as well? To be fair, they have got Courtney injured. So and they he sometimes likes to play Courtney in the back row. Doesn't Ben Earl there? Ben Earl's not there. Yeah, because I think it's the because they 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 have. Oh, it's have Bristol. The, um, Bristol. Oh, I'm yeah. thinking I'm thinking of him as a Saracens player still. Yeah. For me. But, um, um. But. Yeah. Who else have we got here? Who Who are some random people that we haven't really seen? Jack Clement. Mm, Joe Hayes. So Jack Jack Clement plays for Gloucester. Joe Hayes plays for Leicester. Hmm. Simon Kerrod is a Quinns prop who plays for South Africa. I heard a story about him actually. And he doesn't even know the English national anthem, so I don't really want him in. Um, <laughs> so random. <laughs> David David Ribbons. Yeah, average. Uh, Mark That's Wilson, most... mate, though. Mark yeah, Wilson, come him. on. Mark, is yeah, it, is I he, think... Is, he, is Mark Wilson still playing for Newcastle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It says so here, yeah. He's oh, actually yeah. good. He's a good player, mate. And is he, he, is it... he works so hard. Is he from Newcastle, or is it? Is that is it? Is that why? He, I think he's he from is, that he's, end. That end of the country, yeah. Yeah, because if obviously if he's gay with the whole thing with the Premiership and the Championship at the moment, like Championship doesn't seem to really be going anywhere at the moment. Like, I don't even know a restart date for that. So, with him, obviously he's a 
may, making the World Cup squad, making England squad. If he's not going to be able to get game time, maybe like a loan move could be a good idea for him to like a club that like, even maybe to say or something maybe a club yeah possibly I think I think he he worked well really anywhere in the in the Premiership maybe maybe even at, to Quinns or something <laughs> I imagine <laughs> all the imagine, way down south <laughs> <laughs> imagine a back row of like James Chisholm um, Alex Dombrandt and now Chris Robshaw's retired Mark Wilson yeah, it's fair. That would be the perfect place to slot in, actually, with a uh, yeah. Rob Shaw, Rob Shaw uh, moving on. That would be actually that would be a good move for Quinns as well as well as himself. But um, yeah, yeah. No, th- who else? Think- who else do we think could go in? I think Rory McConaughey's an obvious shout. Yeah, Rory, Rory has to be in there. I think well, if we're thinking to our actual England squad for the Autumn awesome Nations Cup, players who have to make it in, obviously. Farrell, Slady, Billy V. Anthony, Anthony Watson. I don't know. I don't think Anthony Watson is a must. I wouldn't say he's a must. Everyone's but... saying he's a dead cert for the Lions tour. And I'm just like, I haven't seen him do much, really, in the last few games for Bath. And he hasn't been standout, mm. really. And he's still quick. But I just don't think he's doing as much as he used to, to be honest. I heard, on, I was listening, again, back to this uh, BBC podcast, I think it... I think, again, Hugo Monia. I think he was saying that uh, that he was in the like he's come obviously after his in- ankle injury or whatever he had. He's come back and he's playing like the best rugby he's been playing ever, like since his injury. Which I, I don't know. I'm not so sure about that, but I don't know. I think, Sometimes again, Hugo Monia chats a lot of who, but um, yeah, that brings me on to, to probably the final point of this episode, um. Austin Healy, he is the worst commentator in rugby at the moment. He makes some absolutely outrageous comments, and I don't know if he's been smoking the wacky backy or not before every <laughs> single rugby match that he commentates on. But he, a, he's his voice is boring and annoying and high pitched, and he's just he's actually smoking something, mate. Like. He, the other day, Tom Dunn had one good game for Bath, like the hooker for Bath, who isn't even yeah, that good. Yeah. And he was like, <laughs> how about this? How about Tom Dunn for a spot in the Lions squad? I was like, <laughs> I was like so you're going to pick him over Jamie George, Luke Cowan Dickey, and all these good players like Ken Owens. Like You're going to pick him. So that's three hookers already. You're going to pick him over all of them? No. Right. Maybe he's, oh. he's obviously just trying to be like a wind up merchant or something. Just he always working a commentator. Yeah, working. <laughs> yeah, definitely working. winding me up. Yeah, uh, I posted I posted that on um on what's it called the House of Rugby Facebook page, and I got a ton of likes. My my endorphins were high that day. Yeah, no, it's good. Maybe they maybe you should try get a job there as an England commentator. Ed. Maybe okay. I'll probably do better a better job than, job than, than yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, I think that about wraps up for this episode. Um, so thank you very much for watching us on Much Do About Rugby. We are, of course, on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts, so you know where to find us. Make sure you go and follow our Facebook and Instagram pages as well as, um, a bit, a bit of the uh, website that's upcoming. I think, Maggie, you're you're working hard on that. Yeah, working on a website. Literally, just to have have a place where we've got all of our audio and uh, obviously videos, where you can just go if you need to, and also just any like updates about the podcast and an easy way to contact us. But yeah, that should be coming soon. But yeah, and um, we we've also got um some exciting news coming up about some partnerships and maybe a possible giveaway so let's uh keep let 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 yourselves keep your ears open for those two yeah, things for those so, loyal um, fans. all the loyal yeah. fans got someone coming yeah all right well thank you very much for listening and uh, we'll see you in the next one bye Rugby.